Hi, I'm Matt Barker here again. This is the I Want a Pony demo. We're up to where we're going to be looking at the UI and uh, what all the different panes are and a little bit about how uh, graphs can be viewed or edited at different parts of the graph. So looking around the UI, there'll be some stuff that's quite familiar and some other stuff that isn't. Uh, so you've got a viewer down here which has standard three button mouse controls. Uh, well, I use the word standard, they're very similar to, to Maya's three button controls where you hold alt and left, middle or right mouse. So have a play with that. We have a scene graph which lists all the things in the scene. And we have our node graph which we discussed in the, the prior videos. We're going to be using that a lot. Uh, we have the parameters tab which that shows all our different uh, parameters that we can change. Uh, we have a monitor, it's where our render is going to come up. We have many other tabs that are hidden away where we can project settings for example, which we can set and come back. And uh, Python, we have our render output log, lots of different things. Uh, we've got things like the dope sheet and the curve editor, and any of the tabs that you may or may not see on your UI can be found in this tabs list up here. For example, if I wanted to see UVs, I could bring open the UV viewer. And all of these tabs are draggable and customizable. So if I wanted my UV viewer um, up here, I can drag it in and just every now and then I need to test UVs, I can, I can uh, bring open that viewer. So just a little bit about why uh, you can't see the pony and whatever this other primitive is in the scene at the moment and how that works. So Katana uses deferred loading. So what that allows us to do is just open up a really, really heavy scene, like a city even, uh, and just hit render and it will send it to RenderMan or Arnold or V-Ray and just start rendering it straight away. So that you don't have to sit there waiting for the app to load all the geometry. Uh, you can just let the renderer do that part of it and the UI doesn't have to fill up the RAM loading it. So one of the ways it does that is it doesn't actually show you in the scene un until you tell it to. And it will also only view at what point in the graph that you are on right now. So I have the I want a pony node which you'll find in help. I want a pony creates one. Uh, and with this one, uh, I can double click on it and we're viewing the Katana recipe from this location and we're also editing it so we can change its transforms and that's about it with the pony create node. Uh, so if we tab this down, you'll see that it's created the pony at root world geo pony. So this is the scene graph location that's generated by the recipe and this is the scene graph over here. So this isn't representing what your scene may have looked like in your 3D application. This is actually being generated by our Katana pipeline as we go. So we're designing where things go in our scene graph as we build it. So I made that visible by tabbing that out. General rule is if it's not visible in the scene graph, it won't be visible in the viewer. But this doesn't have anything to do with the render. Uh, if it's not visible here, it can still render. So there's our pony, and but if we view the node graph from here by clicking the view button, you'll see that the pony disappears. Of course, it's parallel; it's across from the merge node. So this primitive create node here, this is how you create uh, polyplane spheres, the normal type of stuff, but also some fun stuff like this gnome here. Um, you can also uh, yeah. So if we're viewing it from here you won't see the pony and vice versa. But if we view downstream, double click on this render node I made here, you'll see both of them. So the other thing with uh, the UI here is if we want to uh, tap these back but still have them visible, like we might have some proxy geometry or bounding boxes we want to see, you can pin them in place. So if we right click and pin visible, they get the little pin on them now, we can shut it down, it will actually stay there uh, like you might be used to in other applications. So you can choose either way to work. If we go back, you'll see we're only viewing the graph from here, so it might not render the gnome, but we can still see the gnome in the viewport. So just wanted to hammer that home, because that's when first starting to use Katana, that's one of the big differences as to where you're evaluating the graph from. 
So we'll be touching a few more bits on the UI as we go through creating the pony graph, uh, but that's enough for now to get us going. So I'll see you in the next video.